When dealing with our daily emotions that we all face, there can be positive outcomes we control. Is living abundantly really possible for all of us, no matter where we find ourselves today? Absolutely, unequivocally, yes, is the answer. Now, here is the host of The Long Bearded Guy, the Chief Catalyst, Strategist Guide at Jewel International, Gordon D. Melville. Hey, everybody, welcome. Uh, you're with The, the Long Bearded Guy, Gordon D. Melville on Inspired Choices Network. Uh, I'm sucking on a halls. It's almost gone. I uh, apologize again for the voice. It seems to be coming and going. People seem to be, this time of year, um, This for this particular year, people seem to be, they're okay, and then they get sick, and then they're okay, and then they get sick. So that kind of ties into our topic today. We're going to talk about totally going to slay it. We're in the, we're in the Christmas uh, environment, Christmas season, and it's festive and whatnot, but uh, do we slay it? So S-L-E-I-G-H, uh, slay. Um, are we being and living into what we want to? So I want to I wanna welcome everybody here today. And, and I'm so, so thankful. I keep being, and I, it's humbling. I, I shouldn't be shocked, I know, but I am uh, with the response from people. I really, really, really appreciate people reaching out and sending comments and questions and, and likes and loves and shares and all that good stuff. Please find us on uh, Google TV, Apple TV, um, Roku, Amazon Fire, iHeartRadio, Spotify, wherever you listen to uh, uh, live radio, your podcasts or watch TV uh, uh, online, you can find us. And so please, please reach out, subscribe, like, love, share it, subscribe. That, that really helps our reach. It helps our engagement in terms of people watching and and making comment. If you're here, um, if you're listening today, if you can, uh, hop into, hop into uh, the chat room. You'll get a, a link if you want to come into my live studio audience. I would love to have you pop into the chat. Tell me where you are and, and what you're doing, where you're listening from today. Um, would love to hear that. So lots to talk about today on this topic. Uh, totally going to slay it is what I called it. Uh, but let's get after it. Um, when, when we think about, um, at this time of year, there's things that we want to have a, a, a positive, joyous, everybody wants to be up the uh, So we want to slay it in the sense that we want to have a great time. And the challenge is life happens in the middle of that. And we sometimes get so busy and so, um, not blindsided because we know it's coming, right? We know it's coming. It's not a, it's not a blindside, but it's something where we get so involved in all the different bits and pieces. You know, we do secret Santa at work and then we offer to, uh, yeah, the family goes, Hey, who wants to host this year? Oh, I'll do it. I'll do it. And we forget what that means in terms of, you know, groceries and cleaning the house and prep and oh, is uncle John going to be, uh, you know, inebriated and his cousin, it going to going to cause problems like they have at the table before and all these different things. And then all of a sudden, the stress level rises and the anxiety rises, and then we get overwhelmed with it all. And we get slayed more of an S L A Y E D because of the overwhelm. And so we want to talk today, I want to give some ideas, some practical stuff that we could talk about how to avoid getting S-L-A-Y-E-D into getting and totally S-L-E-I-G-H the season and enjoying it. So I want to talk about, then there's so much, uh, again, I had, I, I don't know, I read, <laughs> I lost track after about 23 or 24 pages of stuff that I had written out because there's so much stuff in it that, that can touch this, this season and touch our, our mental awareness and all this and our physical and our, you know, people that have lost people and people that have, um, this is their first, uh, 
their first Christmas with, with uh, an addition, a child, a, a significant other, a spouse, all these different things. How do you, how do you put those families together? Um, blended families, how do you put them together? And other people have traditions, you have traditions, maybe you're trying to want to start new. There's so many things that just kept coming up and coming up and coming up. And I'm like, wow, you know what? This is a huge topic. We could do a series about this for multiple Christmases. So uh, I want to get after it just real quick here. So what I want to do with this is give you tips, tools, and strategies to thrive during this season, not exist. I want to give you some ideas to reduce the stress and anxiety in the season. And I hope that makes sense. I hope you, I hope you that that uh, that that will be helpful. So I'm going to give you some very sorry about the sound. I'm going to give you some very 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 practical, very practical ways to keep your anxiety down. And the first one I want I want to talk about. If you've got your journal, I hope you bring a journal to these because I'm hoping you take notes. I'm hoping that I'm giving you some practical things and some practical ideas and strategies and whatnot that you can implement in your life. That's the point of this. So I'm, if you've got a journal, or you've got something to write on um, and write with, please, please, I, 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 I'm, I'll beg you, take some notes so that things that stick out for you and resonate with you, write them down and review them and, and, and implement them into your life because it's, the no, knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. If I know everything about everything about everything, that doesn't mean anything unless it's, I'm implementing that into my life. So I'll give you the ideas, but please implement them into your life. Make them practical for yourself. The first one I want to talk just, and I'm just going to give a whole bunch of different things here. I, there was so many. Um, align your own values and priorities with the holiday. Align your own values and priorities. So what's important to you? Is family important? So maybe that's where the slant is. Is health and, and wellness important to you? So maybe it's more exercise and it's more, it's focused in that area. Are you a host type person? And so you want to, you want to be that social butterfly. You want to make sure you're the, you're the, you're the hub. Everybody comes to you, right? You're, how, you're hosting the parties and you're having the Christmas dinner and people are coming to you as opposed to you going to, if that's who you are, how does that work? Is that your priority? Is that aligned with your value? Are you, you I don't want to host, but I love going to parties. But as a guest, what's the responsible way to go to, to go as a guest? What's the protocol to go as a guest? What's the, but whatever that is for you, and then step into that. Make sure it's aligned with your values and your priorities. Don't step, because trying to live up to somebody else's expectation, and we've talked about that lots and lots and lots. Disappointment by definition is an unmet expectation. So if you, if you have an expect, if you living up to someone else's expectation of what your priorities should be or what your values should be or what traditions were growing up for you and your family and you're like, oh man, you know what? I, I, I have to hold on to these traditions and, and, and values. They're not priorities for me though. That's going to add stress and anxiety to your season because you're pushing back. It's not aligned. Align your own values and priorities with the holiday. Lose, lose the expectations for everybody. Don't have expectations for anybody. And it's a great time of year to, to take expectations away. Why? Because, you know, someone get, doesn't get you what you wanted. Or somebody, um, somebody else gets something that you think maybe you should have got. Or somebody doesn't buy you anything at all. Or doesn't get you a card and you think they should have. Or you bought them something and, or a card or you reached out to them in some kind of a way and they didn't reach back to you. We, we have these expectations of what other people are supposed to do and how they're supposed to behave and how they're supposed to interact with us. Lose the expectation. Take all the expectation out. That'll so stop being disappointed. It'll stop being setting up resentments that carry into the next year. It's baggage and it's weight and it's emotional baggage we don't need. So lose all the expectations for everybody. In terms of Christmas and, and, and buying stuff and whatnot, set a budget and stick with it. Hey, I'm going to spend this much on everybody or on this much per person. I know lots of families, including ours, that went to a Secret Santa or um, we, we draw out of a hat. You know, a lot of times at Thanksgiving, we draw out of a hat. Who are we going to buy for? We, all of us will buy for all the kids. But in terms of the adults, and some, some of us buy for everybody. Some people don't buy for everybody. There's no expectation of, you know, buy, not buy. 
and no big deal. But a lot of times we're pulling a, a name out of a hat. That saves dollars and cents because a lot of times finances at this time of year can, can get very stressful, you know, credit cards maxed out and all that. We, we spend all of this money on trying to meet expectation or make sure that we're, we're buying what we think. It, it, it just adds a whole another level of stuff. So set a budget, stick with the budget. Um, keep tabs on your spending with an app. There's lots of apps out there, I found. Um, again, I learned a ton with this. There was so much. Um, keep tabs on your spending. There's apps. It, you do it manually. You know, you write it down in your little book. What, however you do it, um, keep tabs on your spending. Pre-plan your menus for key holiday meals, especially the bigger groups. So if you're hosting and you know, okay, so Christmas Day, I'm going to have, you know, a dozen people in the house. So what am I having? And you sit down and you work through it and you, whether you're whether you're looking through i'm not a pinterest person but i know there's lots of unbelievably good recipes in there and lots of good ideas and all those different types of things um, research it a little bit what do people have who's coming do they like turkey or do they like ham do they like fish do they like are they vegans are they make sure you plan well ahead so you've got a really good idea because once you have that it's not last minute running around going, oh, crap, I don't have, I don't have, oh, you know, it, that, that's stressful. It causes anxiety. Don't do that. Plan your menus uh, for key holiday meals. Do a secret Santa instead of buying for everybody. We talked about that. Um, avoid hostess stress by asking guests to bring things with them. Share the load. Instead of dumping it all on one, that's what we do, right? All the families that are coming, all the bits and pieces we host because we got the largest space for that. But everybody brings stuff so some people are providing we usually provide the turkey but but um and stuffing and whatnot but somebody brings rolls and somebody brings um uh, my sister-in-law makes incredible scalloped potatoes so she always looks after the scalloped potatoes and and but everybody brings something that way it's not all loaded on we have one one relative that can't cook or bake to save their life so they are always in charge of bringing um paper plates if we're going to use that but uh utensils and napkins you know uh sometimes we'll, we'll get them to bring you know a bottle of wine or, or something that we're going to have with dinner but that, that takes the load off the, the primary person everybody chips in and that's on the hostess side but if you're a guest ask what you can bring don't show up empty-handed even if they say hey you know what no it's all good it's all good i got it you don't have to bring anything just bring yourself we've done that lots of times but as a good guest, I've never showed up anywhere with with my with empty hands. I, I'm taking them, you know, if they if they drink wine or out, out, maybe it's a it's a bottle of wine. Maybe it's a maybe it's flowers. Maybe I take them some fresh flowers or some a wreath or whatever. I, I'm going to take something. We're never or candles. We're never showing up with nothing as a guest. Appreciate somebody else going to the trouble of doing all that for us. We want to be a, a good guest. Donate to a good cause is a great idea at Christmas time. Give back, give, give to, to people around you. And, and it's a great time to be able to, you know, we buy stuff for the kids. Um, we, we used to use a one in one out program, right? Uh, if, if, when they get their Christmas presents, once they open their Christmas presents, they have to go through their old toys and go, okay, so I've got these three toys coming in. I take need to take three toys out. And those three toys we take to, to Goodwill. We take it to, to we donate them. Right. So it's a, it keeps, it reduces the clutter. Right. It, but the stress and anxiety of it all. Um, schedule Christmas events that you want to attend ahead. So it's not a last minute thing. You know, you're going to go to a Christmas Eve service at church or you're, you're going to go and, you know, there's a, there's a, um, um, a craft fair you want to go to on a you know on a saturday or a sunday afternoon where you can buy stuff that's handmade and whatever it is budget it out in terms of their time right write it down um give yourself a, an agenda and a schedule hey these are the things i'm going to do again it, it that certainty creates confidence the certainty of hey you know what and, and can we is life going to happen yes when what you you've heard me talk lots about control being an illusion it doesn't mean we don't plan. It doesn't mean we don't try. We, we will plan it out. Plan it out. That way you can relax with it. That way there's no anxiety or less anxiety and less stress. And that's what the key about this is to be able to totally slay it in a positive way. 
you have to be able to control your own mind, your own body, what you're doing. So we want to look at that. I got to take a quick break, pay some bills. I want to do a quick uh, couple of shout outs here. First one is to my brother, uh, Jose Escobar is the founder and CEO of Entrepreneurs, The Entrepreneurs Bookshelf. Sorry, first day with the new tongue. Uh, check out The Entrepreneurs Bookshelf to learn more about the morning and evening routine mastery program that's changing people's lives. And it is unbelievable. This program will help you install systems on the bookends of your day to maximize your morning and evening routine. Set up your free strategy session with Jose Escobar today, and you can reach him at www.theentrepreneursbookshelf.com. And the other one is uh, my sponsor, Kat Schwarz. She's a founding uh, sponsor partner. She's the founder and CEO of a groundbreaking company called Compassionate Healing Services and offers a completely unique approach to treating physical and mental health challenges. Check her out on Instagram at Compassionate Healing Services or email her at info at CompassionateHealingServices.com. I love my sponsors. I appreciate them so much. I can't do this without them. I can't do this without you as a listener. Don't go away. We're going to take a quick break. Don't forget to pause and breathe, especially this time of year. Pause and breathe. Take a, close your eyes for a second, as long as you're not driving. Close your eyes and pause and breathe. Pause and breathe and focus. That ground yourself. Do that over the break. You're with, uh, please do that over the break. You're with the long bearded guy, Gordon D. Melville on Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. How much of our daily success relies on our mindset? Anything we are unaware of can still impact our lives. When dealing with our daily emotions that we all face, there can be positive outcomes we control. Why is the word stigma such a BS misnomer? Is living abundantly really possible for all of us, no matter where we find ourselves today? Join the long bearded guy, Gordon D. Melville, the chief catalyst strategist guide at Jewel International invites you to an enlightening, sometimes shocking discussion. He will be challenging you to explore your own answers to these questions and so many more. This will lead you towards living an abundant, successful life, no matter how you define it. Gordon D. Melville is live Fridays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspire Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Long Bearded Guy with Gordon D. Melville. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to the Long Bearded Guy at gmail.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back. Thank you for being with me today. Totally going to slay it is the topic today. And we're talking about uh, tools and tips and strategies to be able to get through, the, the not just get through, but thrive through in a joyous type way, our Christmas season. It, it can be so chaotic with all the different things going on and the pressures and the, uh, the activity and the bustle and whatnot. But sometimes we lose sight of what the reason for the season is. So we're giving you tips and tools and strategies and some, some ideas about things you can do to help reduce or eliminate the stress and anxiety and whatnot from your life over this, what's supposed to be um, a joyous, happy season. So we've been talking about lots of different things. I want to continue with that, that list. Maybe bake. It's like therapy. I, I, I journal. No, I, I got my chef's paper so I, I can bake. I can cook. Uh, I'm not a big, I'm more of a, I like to cook. Sometimes I bake, but it, it's rare. I'm not the big baker. I, I do have one of my sisters-in-law loves to bake. And so she, again, she brings 
cookies and cake and, and cupcakes and, and all these cr- amazing amount of Christmas cookies. But if that's what your thing is, you like to bake. And if you, you know what, if you've never baked, you know what, Christmas is a great time to go and you, you can buy kits to build, you know, uh, gingerbread houses and uh, get recipes from your, from your relatives, from your grandparents or your parents or your aunts or your uncles or whatever. Hey, what, what do you cook? And, and everybody, we used to do a, a, a cookie, um, a Christmas cookie share, a, a Christmas cookie swap. And so we'd make like 12 dozen of whatever our cookies were right? Whatever my, whatever my, uh, it's, it's shortbread or it's sugar cookies or whatever. And you make a dozen, uh, 12 dozen of those cookies. And then once everybody, you set a, you set a day, uh, a Sunday or a, or a time and, and, uh, you know, two or three weeks before Christmas, every all the people that were in that bake-off come together. Usually it's 12 people because you made 12 dozen cookies and those 12 people everybody swaps uh, uh, so you're getting you give away all but one of your types of cookies and you get one of each of all the other 12 people's types of cookies now i've got i only i i did 12 dozen myself of one kind right i didn't have to i didn't have to have all these different stuff going on right all these i didn't have to buy all this um um uh, ingredients i i just the ones for the what i needed and then when you, now I've got 12 different types of cookies. Amazing. Again, shared and it's fun and it's therapeutic and, and it can help reduce the stress in your life. Um, the ultimate Christmas bake-off swap. Exactly. It, it's, it's, and it's fun. And it, 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 just by doing it, it's therapeutic. And, and you can have lots of fun at the actual swap too. Um, make time to enjoy the holidays and the downtime. Be intentionally present. And that's going to come up a couple different ways here. Be intentionally present. Make the time. A lot of people get holidays or some kind of days off. And if you don't, uh, that, that's, that's not good. But you know what? Even that, if, you, if you're not getting time, it makes it even more important. That's not quantity of time. It's quality of time. So, but, but when you get that quality of time, one of the ways to make it quality is to be intentionally there. Be intentionally there. It's not, you don't have a lot of time. Sometimes we, but if you have lots of time, you've got downtime, enjoy it. But focus there. We have this weird thing as humans where we, when we're at work, we feel guilty we're not at home. And when we're at home, we feel guilty we're not at work. We're never, but that means we're never present fully anywhere. And we wonder why we have stress and anxiety and depression and, pressure from all over the place when you're at home during the holiday season this year be intentional about making time to be down and and i don't mean that in terms of depressed i mean in terms of no activity sit with a with a hot mug of cocoa or a glass of wine or a coffee or a water or a mud water or a juice or whatever it is that you drink sit down and just watch the snow or sit down and watch uh, some Netflix or wh- whatever it is. There's lots of good movies out there. Lots of good Christmas shows. Watch some of that stuff. Relax. Force yourself to be intentionally present in the moments as they come by. Because as you do that, the anxiety and stress goes away. It just seeps out of you go and hang out in nature put on put on a coat and a hat and mitts and 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 winter boots and and if you don't have go and borrow and spend some time in nature go skating on a pond make sure it's thick enough and safe and whatnot but my point my point is that that time in nature is is therapeutic it's helpful it helps ground us and get us back to what's important and lets us focus on what's important take a loved one and go for a walk there's so many things we can do that that can help us be intentional about being present uh we have a a guest next week uh that that talks about the power of pure presence there's huge power in being present intentionally present.
right here, right now. It's Christmas time. Give yourself the give yourself the gift. Give your family the gift of being right here, right now. It's a present. It's called the present. It's a gift. And we don't see it. We don't step into that. Be intentional about making, making that happen this year. Um, enjoy the holidays of downtime. Give your time, not just your dollars. Last week, if you listened to our show, and if you didn't, go back and, and listen to that. What's the greatest gift you can give somebody? It's not your money. It's not the stuff you can buy them. It's your time. It's Christmas. Give your time. It's the most valuable thing. And if you have children or grandchildren or you're involved with church or, or groups of people that are, that are helping other people, those people need, your grandkids need those stories. They need that time with you. Our kids don't need more stuff. They need us. Spend the time. Don't, you, we don't have to spend more money. I think if COVID taught us anything, and, and we've had a little bit of a break from COVID, and we seem to be having another little blip, but the, the point is, uh, it, it's time with people. That could be great. That can be not so great. Some people love that. Some people hate that. Some people liked that at the beginning and loved it at the beginning, and by, you know, two or three weeks in, six months in, a year in, it starts to be, oh man, I need to get away. I need to get out. But if that's the case, go do it. But then you're looking after you. And I come back and you've heard me talk about self-care over and over and over and over and over. I'm a walking, talking billboard for what happens when you don't do self-care. So I'm, what I'm saying is, yes, it's not look after yourself. I, I, I'm, I absolutely admonish you to look after yourself first. Abs it's selfish not to. But what, it's not look after yourself first instead of your responsibilities and, and looking after your people. It's do it on top of in, it, it, to, so that you can, so that you can show up the way you want to. Do self-care, whatever that means. That's being present. It's walking in nature. It's, if you need time away, get away. If you need to stop, stop. Look after yourself. Exercise. Take a walk alone or with friends or loved ones or whatever. Get a group of, and, and go and play in the snow or, or wherever. If you happen to be in a place where there's sand, go and, go and hang out at the beach, whatever it is. But go and have fun. Exercise. Make a plan so that you're not, you have charted out. Block out your stuff, your week and your time and your days so that you know what's happening. Make a plan. Focus on others, not just ourselves. Self-care for sure. But a lot of times if we get into a thing where it's so, we don't have anything else. So I know people that are um, single, that don't have lots of family around. It gets really hard to be, we start, we start to do this eventually, right? We put blinders on them and we don't see anything else. Get out of ourself, show up for yourself, do your self-care, but then focus on other people, help other people, reach out to other people. Because it's a, the, the highest rate of depression and suicide is between Christmas, New Year's, and into January, February. Why? Because there's less sun and there's so much pressure of all the different bits and pieces. And, and I found, we found out yesterday, um, a, a grade 11 student at, at my son's high school um, committed suicide. A popular, um, a, a collegiate athlete, like really good um, competitive athlete in all the bunch of different clubs and everybody loved him and, and yeah um split up with his girlfriend lost one of his his collegiate um sponsors in terms of his his athletics and then failed to test but all within about two weeks and 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 he couldn't do it and didn't have the tools reach out to the people around you and the ones that you think are the strongest make sure you start there because a lot of times that strength is armor and it's a coping mechanism reach out people outside yourself keep your routine obviously that's a little bit different at christmas time but you know what keep it as much as you can especially if you have kids keep the routine allow yourself to say no and not have guilt 
If you can't or don't are not up to it, give yourself the gift of saying no. Because when you say yes, you're saying no to everything else. You don't have time. Say no and don't have guilt. Be okay with it. Moderation is the key, especially uh, uh, after COVID-19, when we couldn't do anything, couldn't get together, couldn't do all those things. All of a sudden, we want to do everything we haven't done in the last, uh, in the last two years, three years, this Christmas. Well, that's going to create stress and anxiety. Don't do that. Um, slow down if needed. It's okay. Plan activities the whole family loves. Be grateful. Have an attitude of gratitude. Change the whole, It'll take so much stress and anxiety out. Attitude of gratitude. Be grateful for everything. Doesn't matter what it is. Just be grateful for it. Create new traditions. Don't be afraid to do your own thing. Enjoy established traditions. Keep ones going that are family things that we go, hey, no, I got to do this. I got to do this. But keep that. Keep that in space. And if you want to do new ones, do new ones. Have new ones. You, you, this is the first Christmas with a new baby. This is a new Christmas with, with, a, with a, a new marriage. This is a, new, this is a first Christmas with, with a blended family together. Enjoy that. Set up new traditions. I'm not saying take away the old ones. I'm saying, you know what, maybe as a blended or as a new or as a, as a, a you're looking at Christmas through the eyes of a brand new child. Enjoy that. Be present with that. Spend the time. Make gifts and cards instead of buying them. It's a great way to do it. Doesn't take lots of money. I need to take another break. <laughs> I need to take another break. This is such a, there's so much stuff. I, I can't tell you. I, I, I'm trying to break it down and go, you know what? What are things that, that everybody can, can relate to and things that, that tips and ideas that will help people reduce their stress and anxiety so that they can slay it this Christmas? Not be slayed get slayed, paying some bills, shout outs. Uh, first one is Kat Schwarz is the owner and founder at Compassionate Healing Services. If you email info at compassionatehealingservices.com and mention the long bearded guy, that's me. Oh, I like that in my voice. Uh, that deep thing. Maybe it's good to be sick. Sometimes there's positive things. If you email um, info at compassionatehealingservices.com uh, services.com and mention the long bearded guy, you'll receive 20% off one service. That's a hundred dollar savings off cat's most unique offering, which is a spiritual private investigation service. Cat will use her skills as an evidential medium to reconnect you with a loved one who's crossed over and provide proof of their continued presence in your life. It's amazing. Email her at info at compassionate healing services.com. The other one is Jose Escobar. Is the founder and CEO of the Entrepreneur's Bookshelf. Check out the Connected Leaders Academy membership to take your business to the next level. This is the perfect tribe to learn, grow, and connect like never before. The CLA tribe brings together some of the highest level entrepreneurs from all over the world. Set up a virtual coffee with Jose Escobar today, and you can reach him at www.theentrepreneursbookshelf.com. I massively, massively appreciate my sponsors, all of them. And as we go into this break, again, do not, excuse me, do not forget to pause and breathe. You're with the long bearded guy, Gordon D. Melville on Inspired Choices Network. We'll see you in a few minutes. Be right back. How much of our daily success relies on our mindset? Anything we are unaware of can still impact our lives. When dealing with our daily emotions that we all face, there can be positive outcomes we control. Why is the word stigma such a BS misnomer? Is living abundantly really possible for all of us, no matter where we find ourselves today? Join the long bearded guy, Gordon D. Melville. The Chief Catalyst Strategist Guide at Jewel International invites you to an enlightening, sometimes shocking discussion. He will be challenging you to explore your own answers to these questions and so many more. This will lead you towards living an abundant, successful life, no matter how you define it. Gordon D. Melville is live Fridays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. 
Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Long Bearded Guy with Gordon D. Melville. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to the Long Bearded Guy at gmail.com. Now back to the program. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Thank you for sticking with me today. I really appreciate that. We're talking about totally going to slay it this year. S-L-E-I-G-H, slay it. So that we don't get S-L-A-Y-E-D, slayed, <laughs> overwhelmed and, and too much anxiety and, and stress and whatnot. How do, we, how do we stop that from happening? So we've been talking about different ways to do that. The, the, the one of the pieces I want to talk about just real quick here is so that that family is going to be uh, setting and making arrangements for a funeral instead of for Christmas this year. Is that going to impact their family? Maybe this is the first Christmas without somebody. Maybe this is the first Christmas after a death in the family, um, a parental patriarch, matriarch of the family. Maybe a child, maybe uh, you know a friend, maybe a maybe it's a, there's been a, a separation or a divorce, and, and so you're separate, and so the families are trying to figure out, okay, how do we how do we do that for for our kids this year? How do we how do we blend it so that it's we're making as little impact on them as we can? There's so many of, there's so much of that going on right now, and so we want what are ways to the first Christmas where you, whether you're grieving, whether you've got um, changes in your family what are things you can do if this is the first christmas without someone or you're grieving for something this year prepare ahead have conversations with your family and your friends about about how you're feeling don't don't hold it inside don't hold that dis-ease in your body let it out talk about it with somebody that you trust if you need somebody the long bearded guy at gmail.com reach out willing to listen and and and, and be there prepare ahead. Don't wait till you get into the situation. It makes it much, much harder. If people around you don't understand that's what you're struggling with, right? They're looking at you and going, okay, so why, why are they responding that way? Why are they standoffish? Why are they, um, you know, angry or frustrated or what, what, what is that? It, it's nothing to do with them, but they won't see it that way. Have a conversation, be prepared. Um, in, in our house, we lost, uh, we had a stillborn, uh, well, we didn't, one of our, one of our relatives did, um, nucleus family had, had, and that's 25 years ago. And every Christmas, we have this little angel that we bought right after that the family bought together. And it's a little praying cherub um, candle holder. Um, and we, we put a candle on the top of it and we light it whenever we get together as family, Thanksgiving, Easter, Christmas, whatever, we light the candle. And it sits and we do our thing and whatnot, but it reminds us, yep, they're with us. Maybe, maybe there's something like that that can be helpful for you. Take a moment for yourself every now and then. It's not always go, 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 go for everybody else. I know sometimes we jump into that because it distracts us from looking at our own stuff. And, and we need to do that sometimes. We need to look at our own stuff sometimes, but we also need to take a moment for ourselves. And if that means we just sit down, we leave, we, we, you know, step outside for a few minutes, st stand on the deck, go for a quick short walk, whatever it is, go and do that. Take a moment for yourself. Practice slow breathing. And we've done that before on the show, but in, in inhaling for two beats and then holding it for eight to 10 and then exhaling hard for four out of your mouth. Why? Because you're inhaling just a little bit but you're, and then you're holding, right? You, you hold that inside yourself. You're oxygenating your, your brain and your organs and your heart. And, and then you're exhaling twice as long as you inhaled. Why? Because you want to get rid of the stale air. You're trying to get it, get, put the negative out. And so when you think about that from a psychology point of view, you're doing a physical thing. But if you think about it in a psychological way, 
than what you inhaling positive. I'm inhaling positive and holding on to that positive. I'm holding on to that positive. And then I'm exhaling hard all the negative and crap out of myself, all the anxiety and stress and, and angst and whatever it is. I'm, I'm exhaling all the crap out. And then I inhale positivity. I'm inhaling good stuff. I'm holding that and letting that percolate inside my body and nourish my mind and nourish my, my organs and my heart and my lungs. And I'm holding that positivity. And then I'm exhaling really hard again, exhaling and pushing all that crap back out, taking, getting rid of the negative, doing some slow breathing. Don't skip meals. Again, we go back to routine, right? But in this environment, a lot of times because they don't want to, because they're depressed, because they're grieving, sometimes we don't do our routine the same way. A lot of times we don't. Eat, 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 eat don't skip your meals. Get your breakfast, get your lunch, get your supper, whatever it is that you're doing, whatever your normal routine is, stick to that. Don't push yourself to keep going when you feel you have, uh, when you need a, a rest or quiet. We have this thing, it's almost a badge of honor in our society that says, no, I'm going to keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. I'm going to push through. I'm just going to keep pushing and keep pushing. That's wonderful. But at some point you burn out. Unless you're doing self-care, you're going to burn out. So if you need to stop or you feel you need a rest or a quiet piece away, take it. Take it. You need that. Self-care, look after you, because if you slide side, it happened to me personally, I know firsthand, if, if you don't look after you and you slide sideways, you're no good to all the people you're pushing, pushing, push and push for. Look after yourself first. Take a nap if you need to. I had a nap this morning, I had a crappy, a pain is high. Anyway, lots of different things going on for me. I had a short nap this morning. I'll have another one this afternoon because I have to do that to be able to, to show up where I need to, the way I want to with intention. For you all, for my family, I, I need to, for my clients, I need to do that for everybody. So I need to look after, you need to look after yourself. Get some fresh air, go for a quick walk. It's it, people uh, discount the, what the, what the value of a good walk, just going for a walk. You don't have to, it's not a power walk, right? You, you don't have to do that. Just go for a walk, take in the sights, take in the smells, take in what's going on. Look at the neighborhood, check out the nature, go to a, go to a, um, a, a reserve, like a, a, a conservation area or, or a park or what, go hang out outside for a little bit, get some fresh air. Go easy on the alcohol. It can be a mood depressant and disturb our sleep pattern. Sometimes when we get depressed or we have grief, we have a tendency to, to imbibe more, to drink more, alcohol drink more. And it's not good for us. It's counterproductive to what, we, what we're wanting it to do. And sometimes we're using it as a coping mechanism to, to numb our pain or numb our grief. It's not a good idea. Go find someone you can talk to if you need to, if you need that as a coping, go find, don't do the alcohol thing. Go find someone that can listen. Go find a, you know, your pastor, your priest, go find a good friend, go find somebody that you can talk to a counselor, go talk to, again, the long bearded guy at gmail.com reach out. Uh, I, I'm happy to, to be there for people. Um, Self-care, basically commit to looking after you self-care, whatever that means, eating, exercise, journaling, uh, meditation, um, sleep, whatever it is, whatever you need for you, do it, please, please, please do it. Don't avoid others. Touch base with friends. Don't avoid going out. Don't avoid talking to people. And as un uncomfortable as that can be, and as awkward as that can be sometimes, people that's why people don't go to a, a viewing. They don't go to funeral. Why? Because they don't know what to say. There's nothing you can say that will, will take away their pain. There's nothing you can say that can make it better. But that's not the point. It's not what you're going to say. You go back to one of the other, one of the other points. It's not about the dollars you, you donate to, you know, the, the Gideons or to Heart and Stroke or what. It's not about the dollars you're giving. 
What's it about? Oh, the time. It's that you showed up in their life at a time when they need it. You don't have to say anything. They know. The fact that you're there is what's important. Don't avoid other people. If you're going through grief, don't avoid. Put yourself out there. Be courageous and step through the fear and, and step out. They do that uncomfortable and step out. And if we know somebody that's going through some stuff, reach out. And even if we don't know, reach out. That this We talked about that a little bit already. Reach out. The strongest person that you know needs, needs people to reach out. And it takes five seconds, three seconds, sending a text that says, hey, I'm thinking about you. I don't know what's going on in your life right now, but you know what? Thinking about you, praying for you, love you so much, huge hugs. You have no idea how that will impact people in a positive way. And if you're in a grieving situation, you do it back the other way, right? You do it back the other way. You know, from a grief situation, I'm going to reach out to people around me. Why? Because I'm looking outside myself. When I'm in a depressed place, I reach out to people around me. Why? Because I need to do that. That helps raise my vibration. And by helping myself, I'm helping other people. I'm encouraging other people. I challenge you, do not avoid other people and touch base. We need to take another, another break. Uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to, we, we have um, a, a, a call to action that is big, big, big for my heart. If you need help or you need someone to listen or you need resources or you, I teach tips and, and strategies to be able to deal with regular emotion we all feel every day. And my heart and, and my passion, my avatar is entrepreneurial men. I'll, I'll talk to any man. Matter of fact, I'll talk to any human being, period. Doesn't matter. Age doesn't matter. I don't care. I want to be here in service of other people. Reach out if you need it. As we go to a quick break here, you know what? Don't, again, don't forget to pause and breathe, but think about and resonate with where you're at. Are you slaying it this year in a positive way? Or are you getting slayed this year? We'll be right back. You're with Gordon. Uh, you're with the long bearded guy, Gordon D. Melville on Inspired Choices Network. We'll see you in a second. How much of our daily success relies on our mindset? Anything we are unaware of can still impact our lives. When dealing with our daily emotions that we all face, there can be positive outcomes we control. Why is the word stigma such a BS misnomer? Is living abundantly really possible for all of us, no matter where we find ourselves today? Join the long bearded guy, Gordon D. Melville, the chief catalyst strategist guide at Jewel International invites you to an enlightening, sometimes shocking discussion. He will be challenging you to explore your own answers to these questions and so many more. This will lead you towards living an abundant, successful life, no matter how you define it. Gordon D. Melville is live Fridays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Long Bearded Guy with Gordon D. Melville. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to the Long Bearded Guy at gmail.com. Now back to the program. Hey, everybody. Thank you for sticking with. And you know what? In this last little bit, I just want to touch base. Last thoughts for Christmas this year and for this season, right? It's coming fast. It's only a few weeks, which is just shocking to me that the, the year is, is almost over, right? We, but we still have some time. If you haven't made it what you want to be yet this year, you still have time. Good news. You still have time. You can still, and you may, we may not be able to change our whole life today that we can change the direction of our life today. We may not have only a few weeks left in 2022. If you haven't achieved what you want to in 2022, you, you have still have a few weeks to do that. And if you haven't done it already, if you haven't already thought about 2023 in terms of what your plans are, what your intentions are, what you want to, what you want to make happen next year, you need to sit down and start to think about that. Why? Because you, you want to have a plan. You want to get ready for what's going on. We want to, you, you, again, same thing on a bigger scale, not just Christmas. You're talking about slaying it for the whole year instead of getting slayed 
in a negative way. So last thoughts for, for this week, be intentional. Give yourself the gift, the present of being right here, right now in every moment so that at, as, the, as the season goes by and you look back at it, you go, I was fully present. I was fully there. You'll have a completely different experience. I promise you, I promise you, if you're present and feel and, and intentionally being in the moment, if you're like that, if you look at this season that way, you'll have a completely different Christmas. Far less stress, far less anxiety, much more joy. Deep joy and happiness, two different things. Joy is inside you. It can always be there. It's not situational. Happiness usually is situational. Things around you. Hey, Jackie, great to see you. Be intentional. Pause and breathe. It's an easy thing to do. Two or three times, you, you do, do that little quick exercise, right? Two in, hold it for eight to 10, blow out for four. And you do it two or three times. You can do it anywhere. You can do it anywhere you can do it. I challenge you, do that. Why? It'll ground you. It'll give you focus. It'll make you more present. Give grace all around you. It's a, it can be a hard time of year. As much as it's fun and it's happy and there's lots of good things going on and there's lots of positive things, there's a lot of suffering people at this time of year. Give grace. When someone responds to you in a way that is, wasn't nice or is, is rude or not, give grace. Don't lead with judgment, lead with love. See what happens. The other person you give grace to that we so freely give to other people is ourself. Give yourself grace. Oh, the mashed potatoes burned. Great. Life will go on. <laughs> right? Don't get so tied into stuff. Life happens. Roll with it. The call to action I want to, to put out there for this week is to give yourself the gift of being present this year. The call to action is intentionally, intentionally, I'm gonna say it again, intentionally, on purpose, show up for you. On purpose, be 100% authentically you on purpose, with intention, look after you. And if this is the first year that you've had, uh, you're grieving or there's some, something going on, um, you've lost somebody in some way, you're grieving a relationship or a career or you're retired and, and, and that's not, you're not used to that. Give yourself grace and take whatever time you need to get through the season. Remember what the reason for the season is and be grateful. There are people that aren't here for, for the season. There's people that won't make it to the season or through the season. Be grateful that you're here. Be grateful that you can and are and have the ability to slay it this year in a positive way. It's not we have to go through it. We get to go through it. We want to thrive through Christmas this year. We want to thrive through it all. So give yourself the gift of being present this year. Wrap it up, put it under the tree. Hey, you know what? This is a present to me. What is it? It's time. It's the ability to be present with myself, be present with my family and my loved ones and all the different things, no matter what your priorities are. You go back to the very first piece. Align your, your, your priorities and whatnot with who you are. Next week, we're going to talk Flashpoint, the power of pure presence with a guest. I finally have a guest. Austin J. Haynes is on next week. Show up for that. Make it another great week. I love you all. Massive hugs. Live abundantly and with intention. And I'll see you next Friday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time for another episode with the Long Bearded Guy. Thank you for tuning into the Long Bearded Guy Show. 
You are appreciated and loved. Gordon D. Melville returns Fridays at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific on the InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, make it another great week, leading with love, powerfully designing, crafting, and living out your positively impactful legacy life you were created for. Big hugs.